When the new session of the Senate convenes in January, it'll be led by a new Senate president, the first one in a dozen years. You may know him for his bills, such as legal marijuana, or for his work presiding over many entertaining confirmation hearings over the years. Senator Nick Scutari joins us again on Reporters Roundtable. Senator, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Good to be back. So the public doesn't elect the Senate president. That's a majority party thing, but that's real inside baseball there. How does one run for Senate president? We'll get to the why in a second. Well, I don't think I think the best way to do it is not to run at all. Uh, you know, try to do good work in the position that you're in. I served in the legislature in the state senate for the 22nd legislative district uh, out of Union County for many years and have had many dealings with my fellow senators. And I think it's more of a, a trust factor. Who do we trust to lead this august body uh, with, with an enormous amount of influence and power over things? They need to feel as though they can trust you to not just do what you want, but more uh, set the tone as to what they want. So it seemed like the, I mean, the, the consensus uh, came together pretty quickly. It's not really you going around, hey, Senator uh, such and such, vote for me for Senate president. That's not really how that works, right? Well, it does work that way, actually. Uh, the, the senators are the ones with, the, they're the constituency in this election. Well, first, right. we have to all get elected. Uh, some of us didn't get elected in the November election. So we are elected by the people from our particular districts. And then our senators, as a group, get together and elect the Senate president. Uh, so, yeah, it is a one on one conversation. It is uh, dealing with senators and making sure that their needs feel as though they're going to be fulfilled and that you're going to direct the caucus uh, the way in which they like it reflected. So you did some of that. You were calling, you know, Senator Jones. Uh you know, uh, I want your vote. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so as for the why someone wants the job, it pretty much makes that person the second most powerful person in the state, right? When it comes to legislation, especially, but for a lot of stuff, that's, that's a, you've got an office and everything. Well, that's what they tell me. I haven't had the job yet. Right. Uh, but, but I can tell you, I mean, it is one of the, uh, the things that you should, I mean, if you're in, in, in government, you'd like to be able to utilize a position to reflect what you believe is in the best interest of not just your constituencies, but the entire state of New Jersey. So uh, it, it's a great honor. Uh, I'm hopeful. And it looks as though on January 11th, I'll have the opportunity to do that. I've been down there for quite a while. I've admired our past Senate presidents. I mean, I think if you go back to the 1947 Constitution, there are less Senate presidents than there have been governors. Uh, so it, it's a great opportunity, not just for me, but for the people of New Jersey to move the state forward uh, and, and, and a reset for our legislature. And when I say that uh, that person is the second most powerful person in the state, uh, it's because that, that position says this is what we're going to be considering during this session, or this is going to get a committee hearing or whatever, right? Well, I, yes, but I think it's definitely a collaborative effort, or you're not going to be in there very long. Right. Uh, a wonderful relationship with uh, with the Speaker of the Assembly uh, that goes back beyond our either of our years in this in the legislature, and also a good relationship with the governor and the governor's office. So I, I hope that we're going to work in a collaborative way uh, where we can uh, to move the state forward in positive uh, positive items. And obviously, the Senate has a strong voice in a lot of things, and where we can't agree, we won't. What kind of president was Steve Sweeney, just stylistically, because you can build consensus. Or you can just people, you can just tell people, you know, this is what's happening. What kind of Senate president was he? Well, I mean, what he, I think he was different when he ended than when he began. He had a 12 year run and he was an outstanding Senate president and he wasn't going anywhere uh, if he had been successfully, successfully reelected in the third legislative district because of the the job that he did with the, with the members. Uh, he tried to build consensus, but also to get people what they believed was correct and working within the confines of the system. So he, he really knew what he was doing by the end. That's for sure. He was an outstanding Senate president. You said he was different um, at the end than he was at the beginning. What's like one thing that really changed about him in that regard? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but it's a, you know, it's a trust factor. It's, it's working together. It's building together. I mean, I was the Senate Judiciary Chairman, and I've been the, his only Senate Judiciary Chairman. So um, you know, the power is really vested with the presiding officers. Um, so the amount that the, uh, 
the chairpersons get to do really is <laughs> up to what the Senate president allows you to do. And over time, when you build trust and uh, have an understanding of what how other people operate and what they're capable of, uh, it, 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 it changes and it morphs over time. So will there be a Scutari, uh, Scutari style that'll be different? Uh, all, all I can say is, uh, you know, I ran the Senate Judiciary Committee for a long time. That's probably the similar way that I'll run the, the Senate caucus, if possible, uh, giving people a lot of leeway uh, and, um, and, and trying to do what's right at the end of the day and, and move the caucus forward. We keep hearing that the public is telling you to, to move to the middle, moderate your politics on everything from uh, social justice to reproductive rights. Is that the message that you heard on election day? And is that the message that your caucus got? Well, I, I, I can say that I think we've done a lot of good stuff uh, during the, the Murphy administration. Uh, but really, people are concerned, and so am I, uh, about people's pocketbooks, about the economy, what about affordability here in the state of New Jersey. And that's the thing that we're going to focus most on, is how can we make people's lives better on a regular basis, the bread and butter type of issues jobs, economy, affordability. Those are the things that are number one, number two, and number three in people's concerns. Uh, there are lots of other things that we can do well, but if we're not in office, we won't be able to do them. And the first reason people put us in office is to run good government and control spending. So does that mean you'll see less of an emphasis on social justice issues, reproductive rights? I think we're going to see an emphasis on uh, spending controls, uh, freezing government spending, affordability, uh, the economy, uh, jobs, those are the things that we're going to focus on. Other things we may have an opportunity to do, if they're good, they're right, we'll do them as well. But the number one focus that I'm hopeful for is working on affordability and economy here for the state of New Jersey. So what did you think of the hijinks down the hall in the lower chamber uh, last week? I thought that was an unfortunate instance. Uh, I'm hopeful uh, that that won't occur uh, any further. Uh, but, you know, I think what people want, not just in the chamber, but across the state of New Jersey, is consistency. People want to be felt that they're all being treated fairly and there's a consistent policy. I think that's what we got to get to, that people have a consistent, we see people wearing masks in one place, not in another. There's vaccine checks in one place, not in another. Um, so I think having a consistent message uh, is what people want. And that's what I hope that we can, can work on and achieve. And I think people uh, will deal that way. Uh, they'll be more understanding as long as we're consistent with the policies that we procure. So I guess you want to wait until you get the job officially before you start meeting with the speaker and the governor to talk about working together on agendas. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. Uh, you know, the, 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 that's not my job yet. <laughs> I don't have any decision-making authority yet, uh, but uh, I, I've had some initial discussions just about how we're going to move forward. And the, the Senate president has been very magnanimous in, in sharing information with me. So I'm looking forward to a great working relationship and a, and a good transitional period. All right, Senator Nick Scatari, uh, congratulations on the big gig. Happy holidays, and don't be a stranger. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate it. Thanks.